Welcome to Future Role Model, a podcast that praises the unconventional and kind of redefines what it means to be a role model. And today I have future role model of the century, Lowy Live, <laughs> Craig Lowe. G'day. What do you, what, do you go I go by, by Craig Lowe. My girlfriend by, gets real angry when people say Lowy. Yeah. She saw your post and she was just like, why do people still call you Lowy? I'm like, <laughs> because it's my handle and I was called Lowy for like ever. Yeah, where did that come from? So when you start off in a, a radio, what, they take your name and then they give you a shitty nickname. Uh-huh. That's how you end up with like Striker. And it's like, that's, a, that's, that's terrible. Not. Don't do that. <laughs> Hi, I'm Bean. All right? Like a clip? Sure, bud. Yeah. So my last name's Lowe. So then people were just like, oh, we'll add an I and an E to it and you get Lowy. Yeah. And then it stuck forever. And then it, it turned into my name and then it just became me. And then I started going by Craig again when I hit 30 and I was like, oh, yeah, I'm a person. Yeah. Yeah, you're so, a person with two names. But you have three names. I always refer to you as Natasha Pearl Hanson. Yeah, no, I do. And even like when I go check in at my yoga, st- my yo- name dropping my yoga studio, uh, I have to say my full name because some people hyphenate it. And they think it's like a Pearl Hansen is well, one name. Your name sounds like you'd be a bitch. <laughs> I remember the first time we did a show, it was like Natasha Pearl Hanson. I'm like, uh, she's going to have some theories on immunization for sure. <laughs> Shit. Oh, my God. I love I love hearing stories about what people thought I would be like before they actually met me. Well, when I saw your abs, I was like, ah, oh, yeah. She sucks. No, I was like, she, she, well, you're hot. But I was like, oh, her jokes are going to be crap. <laughs> And then you know how like most female comedians who are attractive are like, I'll wear a trucker's cap. That'll throw off the scent that I'm fuckable. Exactly. And it doesn't work. Well, I, th- th- he says that because I have a hat on today, but I don't wear it on stage. Congrats. Just shout out. I don't wear it on stage. I don't know why female <laughs> comedians feel like they can't be attractive on stage. I went through a phase like that. I mean, I shouldn't even say a phase, but when I first started in Chicago, yeah. I felt like I always had to be kind of like tomboy on stage. Yeah. And then by the time I got to LA, I just didn't care anymore. Yeah. Like most of the time, if I do look sloppy, it's just because I'm fucking tired. Yeah. You know, and I just go and I'm like, I'm just got to look presentable. I mean, yeah. To be here. But if you guys don't get a look at her fiance, if you want to find out why she's tired all the time. Yeah. Jesus, I wouldn't <laughs> get a bit either. <laughs> he's a he's an attractive guy. He's flawless. You, you got a hot, flawless victory. I do. Yeah. I don't. I was saying that to you on uh, our chat the other day, but I was like, I don't know what I did to deserve that guy. And he proposed. Yeah, I know. He, like, actually wants to marry me. What yeah. kind of fucked up thing did I do to yeah. him to convince him? <laughs> yeah, he's probably a serial. He's got some weird shit you yeah, don't know about. Yeah, it's like American Psycho, yeah. and it's going to come out in, like, ten years. For sure. <laughs> and you have a hot girlfriend. Ah, uh, she'll do. Yeah. yeah. She's she'll all right. Been, you guys have been together for how long now? Three years coming up December 3rd. See, and that's, like, that's how I feel about marriage. Like, we've been together for over seven, and yeah. I'm like, we're kind of just married already. Do we really have to go through the rigmarole? Well, you're like, having some trouble with the engagement, so you don't know if you want to pull the trigger and get the big title? Yeah. Is that what's happening? You don't yeah, know if you want to go bit. for the main event? Yeah. I think I've just been so comfortable being a really cool girlfriend. Yeah. And and I kind of wanted to hit certain points in my life before I was like, okay, now I can be a wife kind of thing. Yeah. Like what? So... I don't know, just maybe career stuff. I, it's like the last thing on my mind is planning a wedding right now. I'm just yeah. not a girly girl when it comes to that kind of stuff. Like, I just don't really care about that kind of title. Well, most girls who move to L.A. don't care about that stuff. Like, if you really want to get married, you still live in Des Moines. Yeah, exactly. That's a Des Moines thing well, to do is getting married. And I'm from Wisconsin. Like, it's basically the same as Des Moines. It is so Des Moines. How did you end up with abs if you're from Wisconsin? I know. Your people are gross. I think it was because, you know, the farming yeah. All the farming. <laughs> I, farmed, <laughs> I started farming when I was farming. like nine. And that's what I, I will start, always start telling people. Oh, yeah, I started stripping tobacco when I was nine. I always like to put that conspicuous pause in there so they just think that yeah, I was I thought, a former stripper. Yeah, I was about to jump on Google for sure and be like, I'm definitely <laughs> going to find a stripper called Natasha Pearl Hansen. Whenever I go to Vegas, I get stripper cards that say Natasha on them and hand them out to people that's when they quite. ask me for my card. I always wanted to <laughs> I always wanted to get uh, my headshots put on little cards and I was going to hire a bunch of those dudes in the neon shirts to just stand out the front of like CAA <laughs> and just flick them at agents do it. and just shoot do it, it as a sketch. But then I, I got signed with CAA, so I don't have to do it anymore. Yeah. Oh, name drop. Name drop. No, I'm not saying. I'm no, saying, I'm just- I'm saying, <laughs> I'm saying the thing is, is that when you're repped by the biggest agency in LA, you fucking made it. Like yeah. I don't have any troubles anymore. At all. Like I've made, like I'm yeah. famous now. Yeah, you're perfect. I don't need money. 
No. Nope. I'm just in this to help out up and coming comedians. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's fine. I book everything. I don't oh, care. Oh, man. Yeah, you're working all the time. You're working later today on I, like a million dollar project, right? Yeah, I get offered a bunch of things where it's like, hey, we're shooting this thing that's probably never going to broadcast. It's on Facebook live chat, in Instagram update snap, and uh, it, it's going to be $300, but um, can you do it shirtless and jerk off a cow? I'm like, <laughs> yeah, this is why I moved to the other side of the planet. <laughs> this is it. My, bro my brother's a millionaire, and here I am jerking off cows for 300 quid. Dude, yeah, the things that we have to do to just fucking... I Because I even shot... I've shot probably five pilots in the last two or three years that have yeah. never aired. Yeah, you never see whatever you happens to a pilot. Half the things just never air. Yeah, but also it's like you, you knew what we were signing up for, but also I thought I was definitely going to be famous by now. <laughs> like it's taken a lot longer than I predicted. That's yeah. why I refused to marry Erica. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. You need to be famous first. I gotta, I want to be able to cheat on her before I know I want to settle down with her. Exactly. You, know you want to I mean? at least have the option. Yeah. I want, I want to be so famous that my current gold medal becomes like a participation trophy. <laughs> <laughs> Ali Wong was in, uh, I did a show on Monday at Poncho's, yeah. Dan O'Carter's room, and uh, Ali Wong was there, and she was talking about cheating on her, like she's got a new bit about cheating on her husband and how um, she was just saying you have to be, uh, as a as a man, you have to be successful first before you can start cheating, and I was like, that's so true, like, I, all my guy, all my guy comic friends that I know that have cheated, it's because they're suddenly successful. Yeah. That's, that's an actual mentality of yeah. men. It's like, unless I'm like, I'll know when I've made it. Yeah. Because everyone's going to want to fuck me. Everyone are like, I'll go to <laughs> FSU and walk out of there with chlamydia and not even have sex with anyone. It's just that Florida's close. <laughs> Take that FSU. Um, so how long have you been in LA now? Oh shit. Seven years. Ugh, me too. Ugh. Yeah, because we, well, I we, met you yeah, like we met. right around the same time I moved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where was that? Where did we meet? Was it I, uh, comedy chuckle bucket? It, it was either, yeah. Yes, it was. Yeah, you were hosting. The old chuckle dungeon? Yeah. You yeah. Were, <laughs> I haven't played haha -ha in years. Oh, well, of course not. You're not Persian. <laughs> Sorry, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. That's the only room that I do where I fucking do great and better than like 98% of the lineup and then you just never hear from them again. I know. It's... <laughs> You know what? It's the weird. Like, you'll get off stage and Terry, the owner, would be like, that was very good. you got to come back now. And you're like, book me. And then she stares at you. And then you're like, all okay, right. bye. I'll catch you, catch you fucking 2019. It's, it's so bizarre because, like, I, I work in New York. I, I work in New York almost more than I do here to the point where people think that I live in New York a lot yeah. of times because I can get booked on like three shows a night there. Yeah. And then I come back to LA and I'm like, Hey, I'm alive. <laughs> Put yeah. me on your show. Yeah. It's weird because if, <laughs> as soon as you leave and do something incredible anywhere else, everyone in LA just thinks you're dead because they yeah. haven't seen you stand at the comedy store smoking cigarettes on For the like patio. A, a week. It's like, he must have quit comedy. It's yep. like, nah, yep. I actually just hate hanging out with you fuckheads. Yeah. To be very honest, you got nothing to add to my life. You well, boring, dull people. And that's the thing is like, I'd rather be spending, Yeah, I think you just hit a point of um, diminishing return, as they say, where like, you you can either hang out somewhere and just hope that somebody talks to you and you get a spot out of it, yeah. or you can go home and fucking work on something that actually can yeah. be valuable. I think a lot of people confuse doing comedy with doing something productive. Exactly. <laughs> like going and hanging out somewhere just to high five a bigger comedian and try and get an opening spot. Yeah. Or you can write. Or come up with a show concept or something fun. Yeah. Or even just not do any comedy. It's okay to go and see a movie. Well, and that's what I always tell my friends. I'm like, when I don't have, you know, when I have a night free and I don't have a show or something, I want to just hang out with my friends because my friends are what make me laugh. And yeah. then I write good shit. Yeah. So I can't just sit at home and be like, oh, what was funny about ninjas? And yeah. like write something about, you know, like yeah, I don't comedians operate Comedians who only way. hang out with comedians and then hang out at comedy clubs every Every night, it's like you are not a rounded human enough. Yeah. You're so, going to only write like comic stuff. I don't know. I mean, not necessarily. It depends on how you write. But for me, yeah. like I would only be writing things about like hanging out with comics then. Yeah. You know, which is terrible. Exactly. Because comics aren't regular people. Like, no, we all think <laughs> funny. 
it's like, oh, a baby died? Hilarious. <laughs> no, exactly. Try that Try that shit anywhere else in America. Well, and the kind of shit that I joke about, even in privacy, without, like, yeah. cameras or a mic around, is, like, everybody's guilty of that, but, like... I would definitely, people would be like, well, you have a sixth sense. Like, yeah. for example, the other day, my friends were in town from, uh, they're both from Wisconsin, but they live in Seattle and San Diego now. So we were we at the Packer game last weekend. And I told them how I troll Instagram to look at ugly babies. <laughs> and so we were doing that for like 20 minutes, trying to find the worst babies. Yeah. And then we were like, we're terrible people. Now nah, there's like, some grossies there's out there. There's some bad yeah. babies. And some comics have different renditions of jokes about like ugly babies yeah. on Instagram or online or whatever. But it's true. Like it's a lot of times people's kids aren't ready to be seen yet. Yeah. And they just throw their pictures up there like you want to look at that shit. Yeah, because you think your kid <laughs> is cute. But to a lot of other people, you're like, how does your kid have four eyebrows? <laughs> right. It's three weeks old. Old. What are you? What, what did you, you put in there? Yeah, a lot of uh, like I'm from the Gold Coast in Australia, and a lot of people have just just hideous kids. Why is? It, but they all turn out so hot. Yeah, well, my theory is that two ugly people will always make a really hot kid. Uh huh. And then one hot, one okay person is an ugly person, mm -hmm. and then two hot people, it's like luck of the draw. Right. Do you yeah, know what I mean? you could just get because you could be like. You could get all the worst qualities yeah. of two hot people. Yeah. Like the big chin that looks really good on this person and the yeah. nose that look yeah. Like Bruce Willis and Demi Moore. That's exactly gross, what I was right? gonna say. Like one of their daughters <laughs> looks like Jay Leno fucked a potato. <laughs> It's the only way, and I don't know which one it is. I've all got stupid names. But I it, can't believe you just said that example because that's what I was going to say. And then head, I was right? like, I can't say that. I yeah. don't want to say it. I don't want to say it. Yeah, but then like like <laughs> any of the Baldwins and any of the women they've had sex with, their kids are just immaculate. Fucking perfect. Yeah. yeah. Like amazingly hot people. So what, what was it? Like, let's delve into what life was like growing up in Australia. Because I don't have a lot of friends from Australia. I know people from Australia. But I'm planning to potentially go there yeah. in a month. And uh, I'm fucking pumped because I feel like the vibe I get from Aussies is like kind of like Wisconsin people. Oh, yeah, it's very Wisconsin, but yeah. with more beaches. Yeah, like hotter yeah. in general. Well, I'm a troll <laughs> where I'm from. I'm like short. <laughs> you know, I got weird things going on with my face. Like my eyes are too far apart. <laughs> Which is something I'm dealing with now in my 30s. Oh, I looked in the mirror. You ever get real high or drunk and you just yes. cry a lot in front of a mirror to be like, let me figure this out on my own. What, what's happening here? Like I get, I love getting drunk by myself when my girl goes to bed and I'll just, I'll listen to songs and I'll just bore my eyes out. I'll probably see a therapist for it, but it's like, I feel like I'm doing some inner search in here. But the other day I was looking in the mirror and I was like, my shit's too far apart. <laughs> <laughs> Real, like I got Jeremy Renner eye. You know, like, he's not a, he's not the hot Avenger, but he's consistent. My fiance does photography, and on Photoshop now the the latest update, you can move eyes closer together or further getting apart. It, getting it now, and, uh, I'm leaving now. You should get send us thing. a picture, and we'll just push them so close together. <laughs> well, you don't want to look like you don't want to look like you know a shrimp where they too. Like, you know, some people have too close together eyes, and you're like, how do you breathe? Where's your nose work? <laughs> or drive? Yeah, like you, if you, if that's the case, you should only drive like unicycles, like you're. <laughs> The amount of wheels that you have should be <laughs> equivalent to Consistent how far apart your, your eyes. eyes are. Apart. Well, I got one eye at work. The other's on vacation. It's fine. Because <laughs> I used to have a joke about vegans and like how we're designed to be carnivores because omnivores have eyes on the sides of their heads. And... Uh, <laughs> And that's how herb like herbivore whatever. Um, but it's true. Like herbivores can only see like their peripherals completely different. Yeah. They don't have to like <laughs> they don't have to like catch shit. You know, it's like they just go to a tree and eat it. And it's pretty easy for them. What a, what about a brontosaurus? <laughs> I don't know much about them. Yeah, that's your problem right there. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't done a lot of research. I had a um a couple of years ago, it was like three years ago, I did I uh, went to the Explorers Club dinner in New York with a friend. <clears throat> who is an explorer. And Wait, what? You can't just say that like that's a chill thing to do. Explorers. What are you doing this again? I'm exploring, seeing if there's more <laughs> islands out there. I'm going to be in the Galapagos for about four weeks. Just exploring. <laughs> it's not a... All the land's found. The animals are done. We're locked. We don't need any more explorers. Things are actually disappearing now. So it's like reverse exploring. Like, where did it go? <laughs> 
<laughs> it was here. Now where is it? Um, but he, like anti explorers. <laughs> I'm just seeing what's missing at this point. <laughs> <laughs> that island is completely underwater. Let's go. Uh, Barrier reef, uh, gone. It is. It is kind of gone. Yeah. That's why I want to go to Australia before it's fully gone. Because in um in the Caribbean, like a third of their coral reef is dead. Yeah. But anyway, the, the Explorers Club, <laughs> the Explorers Club dinner um was at the museum, like the history museum. Yeah. And I remember getting into this drunk conversation with some guy who had like literally discovered a species. And I was like, yeah, you have a hard time believing dinosaurs are real. <laughs> and he got so no, mad at me. I dated a girl in the same so theory. Mad at yeah, me. They get <laughs> I was some like, people don't, some people are like, nah, well, I've never seen one. And it's like, bro, bro, bro. bro. It's like when someone's like, the earth's flat. Have you been to space? It's like, well, fucking you never are. I can tell you that <laughs> straight out the gate. I was literally like, that's so long ago. I just can't believe that that actually existed. And he was like, what do you mean? Like, there's bones <laughs> everywhere. And I was like, yeah, that could just be just shit that fits together over time. And like, I was just drunk and trying to cause like a problem. <laughs> and he was getting so mad. <laughs> it was very entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> While I was eating a cricket on a stick. like, Well, you're an explorer. About, what else would you eat? I am an explorer. I'm an explorer of domestic cities. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite thing at the moment, because you just brought up explorers dinners, is when, like, lately, because there's so much uh, empowerment for literally every single whatever you are. <laughs> Which you're doing such a wicked job of making fun of, by the way. I just love because <laughs> my latest thing is whenever I go, I see whatever race someone is and then whatever gender they are and then whatever sexuality that they are. And it's almost like Mad Libs. <laughs> It'd be like the blah and blah and blah. Blah and luncheon in media. Yeah. <laughs> no, like it is. And it's kind of like you just have to like pick a thing. Cause like I, this is what I always say to people too. Cause I'm like, I have a lot of women in comedy that I like, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But I also fucking like dudes too. Like, I don't think guys are doing anything wrong. You know what I mean? I'm just kind of <laughs> one of those, I'm one of those people that I'm like, all right, let's just kind of go for the ride. <laughs> let's I, just go on the ride. I just, I'm just laughing because it's just, <laughs> whenever it's like, when you need to be real specific about what makes you powerful, you you probably not. That's <laughs> so true. Like I don't, I'm not like I'm not having like I'm having a five eleven luncheon for white guys from Australia named Craig. It's good to be around all my Craigs. <laughs> powerful, <laughs> powerful Craigs here. Beautiful, independent Craigs. It's like it's so, it's so weird and specific. <laughs> I think you should start. A, I think you should start an under six foot Craig luncheon. Look, if there's any other under six foot straight white Craigs from from Australia in LA, media power luncheon. <laughs> no, everyone's doing their best. Everyone's doing great. <laughs> you should every week. You should do like a new, very specific thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start my own luncheon, <laughs> luncheon. <laughs> and I'm going to sell tickets. Just call it the specific, the very specific luncheon. And then like every week, pick a new, very specific, like Just four things. Surrounded by beautiful Barbaras with no ankles. <laughs> <laughs> you got to have lost both feet via some sort of a sewing accident. <laughs> it's great to be surrounded by all these beautiful feetless barbs. <laughs> So beautiful, so powerful, so brave. It's ironic too, because when before we came on, we were talking about uh, hover rounds <laughs> and the hover round commercial. You gotta explain your commercial because you did it so. Does well. anybody know the like anybody listening? The hover round commercial was the best commercial, and I, do you you had never seen this? No, I hadn't seen that one. Um, where the two old women like are at the edge of the Grand Canyon in their hover rounds and they're just yelling hover round into the abyss of the Grand Canyon. It's echoing like these two old women <laughs> decided to trek across the country together in their hover rounds and go to the edge of the Grand Canyon. Like you couldn't even you couldn't even walk up that. You have to ride a donkey, I think. <laughs> like you either have a helicopter or a donkey take you to the Grand Canyon. And they're were like, they at your explorer's lunch? <laughs> Okay. We got to the Grand Canyon on these bad Explorer's boys. Explorer's Dinner 2019, please feature the hover round and give it like 
<laughs> turn it into a. <laughs> if I was gonna ever have a jetpack, I would want it to be attached to a hover round. Like that thing is the I most. I want to attach to an old lady at the Grand Canyon. <laughs> That's where we should test all jetpacks on old ladies next to the Grand Canyon. I'd like to volunteer my grandma. She actually wants to die already, so <laughs> she's a perfect volunteer for testing. <laughs> she. Bro, I'm 33. I'm ready to go. You know. I'm 33 too, and I. But Congrats. I feel like I'm just on. I feel like I'm at. I'm. I'm get, living my best life right now. Really? Mm-hmm. See, that was weird when you sent me the email for the show, and it's like, uh, it's about role models. Who do you look up to? And I'm like, fucking me. You can. <laughs> I be your am own. my role model. <laughs> you can be your own role model. <laughs> I don't know anyone who's been kicked in the dick and gotten back up like me. How many dick p- k- kicks? How many dick? <laughs> How many dick pics do dick you want? Kicks? I'll have to run it past Justin. I can send you two. They're in IMAX. <laughs> Uh, man, look at it. This on paper this year, I've had a great year. So on paper, right? Or, mm-hmm. or what I project to everyone on social media. Oh yeah. So it looks like the Low Train Express has been all stops to successful. Oh, of course. You know, like uh, what did I do this year? I shot with the Muppets. That was dope. Shot a movie. That's an actual movie. That was great. Uh, wrote for the BET Hip Hop Awards. That was weird. But then it's like, (laughs) but then I went for like two things I really wanted and pitched a show, which I thought was definitely going to get picked up. None of them happened. And then I was like, all right, well, I should definitely kill myself. Yeah. But then I'll, but then I'll wake up and I'll be like, all right, that's enough drinking till 3 a.m. and crying in front of the mirror, looking at our eyes. (laughs) Let's get back up. With a ruler, just measuring. Just like, geez, four inches? Well, my friends that were in town last weekend, we had this conversation because one of them, one of them is in this place with her relationship that's weird and um the other one <clears throat> the other one has been working at Amazon uh for ages and she just put in her notice like she's a she's at the top of the top at Amazon and she just is like sick of it wow so she's like I just want to take a sabbatical for x amount of months and I was like great you already bought a house in Seattle you already bubble you like you you've done it already yeah you're 33 years old and you can take a break she's 33 she's 33 she owns a home in the suicide capital of yes, America yes yes she's, like, she's well on her way killing it and so we were having this conversation about like success because they were like oh and you've had a great year we've been so busy none of us have really seen each other this year and usually yeah. we see each other like every month or so and I was like yeah I've been busy because I'm hustling for myself but and it looks like every every time somebody sees me they're like oh you're killing it you're getting flown here and there I'm like I'm not getting fl- I'm flying myself there yeah. I'm putting in the work to get the shows there and yeah. shoot the stuff like in the hopes that it will eventually not be that way yeah but like it's I've fully invested in myself in this year so fucking much that I'm like drained great yeah. It sounds like but you're in the looks, good headspace for no, it, but it looks like it always looks good to anyone on social back home, media. Yeah, you're like, oh wow, you're like a big famous comedian. And Dude. then you get here and you're like putting in your avails at the factory and it's like Exactly. Ah, and what are you gonna do? And you hope you just get like one. <laughs> oh, no, I know I I gave up on that. I don't do UFC. I don't know how to do stand up anymore. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I should just be a pro fighter. I'm getting pretty good. I'm three and a half in Muay Thai and, and eight in stand up. Yeah, so I'm- I open for another big comedian. Why shouldn't I be on the marquee? You know? Exactly. Fuck it. Yep. <laughs> I love you. These are real specific shit cannings of people, but you guys, you guys. How did you get into comedy? You started in Australia, right? You I started-, started young. I started not even doing stand up. I started stand up out here. Yeah, take that. Yamaha. You started stand up out here? I started, I, I did radio when I was 15 and then I got like pretty big in that. And mm-hmm. then I got fired because they were like, oh, you're too good for this. Get out of here, you rascal. What? <laughs> Wait, so let's, let's backtrack. So you were, you grew up in the Gold Coast. Yeah, I grew up on the Gold Coast and I, I I wanted to do something in comedy, but there was nothing to do. So I was like, well, people on the radio were funny. I'll yeah. go and work in the radio, but I was too scared to say I wanted to go on air. So for the first two years of my radio career, I made radio commercials like John's Great Big House of Lamb Chops and Albury Wodonga. But how know. did you get into radio? Did you just walk I, into no, a radio I, station? I, I and- did work experience from like nine at night to three in the morning and then I went to school at eight. And that was part of your school programming? No, I just-, just I just wrote in like, hey, can I work at your station for free? And they were like, okay. Oh my God, that's and awesome. I went in and did that free for two years and then I just ended up one day I was like can I be on air they're like yeah oh my god (laughs) sure so it was like kind of yeah that's it's something it's so interesting to hear that because it was Gold Coast Sydney right no Gold Coast uh, Queensland 
Okay. Queensland is north of Sydney, yeah. right? Okay. I kind of know Australia because I've been looking at the map recently. I know like four Good places. Good for you, American. <laughs> is there other places besides Sydney I've been and looking at maps and things <laughs> and the Iraq. Doesn't it, do you remember that that video of that teen USA who like did not know where shit and, was? And such as. And, and such uh, as like and the Iraq <laughs> and uh, the um, and therefore such as. She was. She got, look, to be honest, I think I've done. You've everyone's done a job interview when someone's throwing you a cut. Like I, I, I tried to get a job at Barney's Beanery, and they were like, "What's your worst quality?" This is like seven years ago when I first got. <laughs> like, what's your worst quality? And I was like, "Well, uh, now that you, uh, you bring uh, my, I, I get, I get, I get sweaty hands. I guess I get, I get, I get sweaty hands, and I'm not going to touch any of your, your cl- unless I ask. The thing is sweat and such as." <laughs> <laughs> and I just never heard. You know how shit you got to be to not get a job at Barney's Beanery? Yeah, Rick? it's pretty bad. You can take a shit next to, like, the air hockey game. And yep. even then they're like, calm it down. I got a job at Applebee's and I had never served a table in my life. So, <laughs> but I am a, I'm a cute, I was a cute girl. I was a cute girl. <laughs> what are you now? I'm a brave, independent, strong, <laughs> sexy, fierce vibrant woman. woman. <laughs> Boss bitch. Hashtag. <laughs> has, <laughs> hashtag badass. <laughs> oh, my God. I In one of the series that I'm pitching right now, I, I totally rip into this whole thing, too, because, like, people do hashtag the shit out of the things that they absolutely aren't, which is kind of what you yeah. were saying before. But, like. I just love. I love. <laughs> Obviously, we've gone through a big cultural change, and and that <laughs> obviously that was needed. A lot of a lot of us men were like, "Oh, it was that bad." Whoops! But yeah, <laughs> but I hate it because we're in the comedy community, and I know at least five people off the top of my head that no matter what devastating thing just happened, they can somehow make it about them. <laughs> somehow, sure, where it could just be like polar bears are dead. I remember when I was in high school. I was so white because I couldn't get a tan. People called me polar bear. I can relate to this pain. It's like, get no, the fuck out of here. you can't. Okay, you're a little different to the massacre of polar bears that just happened. Right. And then I'll throw back old photo. <laughs> yeah, and, like, oh, yeah. and that's the thing is, you know, and I don't really, I'm not very much of a, um, what would you, how would you word it? I don't really feel sorry for myself about anything. Yeah. So I think that when I see all these different massive things happen where people just, I've been asked to speak out about different things in the comedy community as a woman yeah. a, a bunch of times. Yeah, because there was a bunch of fucking creepy guys in our community. Sure. Like a bunch. But also there are a lot that aren't. Yeah. And, and most of my experience hasn't been negative. I don't really, I, I really can't pinpoint like a really terrible situation yeah. besides like guys hitting on, but that's not bad. Like I don't consider a guy hitting on me to be creepy. But, but some do. Some Which are, I never realized because yeah. I'm like a not ugly guy. So when I did it at work, it was like, huh, I'm, I've got a date. But if yeah. I was like 30 pounds heavier, it's like, yeah. John from accounts is kind of fucking creepy. Yeah. It's like, Jump from account, shot his shot. Well, and there are creepy ways to hit on somebody. Don't oh, get me wrong. Like there are ways. some people that do it very wrong. Yeah. But, but you know, in general, like if a guy had hit on me at the comedy store back, you know, when I first moved to LA and I was like, oh, I'm not into, or I'm seeing somebody, yeah. they wouldn't bother you again. And it wasn't a big deal. You yeah, know what I they mean? They would just never book you on a show again. Exactly. You would never work. And when they became <laughs> a booker at a big club, they remembered that. Yep. Good and that's you. why I had to run my own show at the comedy store for three years. The end. <laughs> and then I got tired. And then I fucking stopped. <laughs> the, the double end. The story of how I gave up. <laughs> the story of how I gave up on one club. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Love you guys. Um, I think the thing is, is that, and just taking the piss out of everyone who does a post or whatever we were saying about the luncheon. One thing I've learned this year is that once again, no matter what race you are, religion, gender, sexual orientation, take whatever four things I just said that you are and you immediately think you are the most oppressed people. Yes. <laughs> Every si- Like, I'm a straight white male and right now it's hard to get work. So in my head, I'm like, well, no one's got it harder than me. <laughs> <laughs> but then it's like you talk to, like, an Eskimo who's gay and lives in Alaska, and I'm sure he would look at me and be like, well, 
no one's got it harder than me. How, how yeah. Eskimos talk. <laughs> they obviously talk like. Uh, Man, is Eskimo <laughs> is, is that offensive? Are they called Native Alaskans or something? I I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know anybody from Alaska natively. I have nothing to draw from. Hey guys, uh, email in. Did I just defend the shit out of you Please in Alaska? Please let us know. Please let us know what uh, y'all Alaskans but say. That, that's how I'm taking it as that whatever you are, you think you have it the fucking hardest. Yeah. So I'll, I'll be empathetic for it, but you don't get to skip the line right now because you are. Yeah. <laughs> that's like something I watch my mom do growing up all the time because she, she feels sorry for herself about everything yeah. and she's. Half black, half white, essentially. I mean, it's, you know, there's some Dominican splashed in there and some Native American, whatever. But she, so whichever side she's hanging out with, she is, she's not the other thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if she's around like a bunch of white people, she's like, yeah, I just don't, I'm not even black. <laughs> like, you know, like, she's like, <laughs> wow. she's like, it's just crazy. So I watched this growing up and I was like, man, you know, that's not something I'm going to do, which is kind of like an inverse role model thing because I, you kind of like watch somebody and you're like, okay, I might look up to you for these things, but this thing that you do is weird and yeah. I'm not going to do that. So yeah. at least I'm glad I watched that my whole life because yeah. I can notice that in people really quickly. Yeah, you can sort of see, uh, <clears throat> like I when I wrote for the BET Hip Hop Awards. <laughs> Oh my God. I, I would love to see you. I would love to have been a fly on the wall during this. So in case you don't know this about me, I'm super racist. <laughs> <laughs> Just use that as a soundbite for selling this episode. Craig Lowe Is that how you got the job? Listen here, you <laughs> people, whatever. No, um, I got the job because I, 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 I know the host of the show and he liked my writing uh -huh. from something else we worked in years ago. And then he, they made me audition for it like anyone else had to hand in writing submissions and shit like that. Sure. And they were like, yeah, cool. But I was pretty much looking when I got there to Miami, like the other, first of all, the other two writers just didn't show up. So 90%, 90 percent of what happened on that show was, was what you. I wrote. And when you think about it, a 33 year old straight white male from Australia writing the BET. <laughs> oh my God. So that, that was weird, but. It was, it was being, that was, I was around the most amount of black people I've ever been in my life. Mm -hmm. And it was the funnest experience I've ever had because I, sure. I, I culturally got to learn so much. Like there is such a camaraderie yes. amongst African American. They refer to each other as brothers and sit, they high five, they got handshakes. They're like, they're coolish. It's like a club. I am never getting into, but yep. I got like a five day pass to just go in for a hot minute and it was beautiful. My black side of the family is the fucking funnest. Yeah. Like when I go to the South side of Chicago and hang out at my auntie's, yeah. even if we're just like sitting in her living room, everybody comes over. It's like a, it's like when I say fam, like the, people just come over all the yeah. time, all day and everything's fun. Like we used to have family loot when I lived in Chicago, we had luau's every year, which is funny because it wasn't, that's the most black thing ever. Luau's. It, it was, but like nothing was luau. It was like yeah. ribs and a lay. You like, you put a lay on, Oh, not what but I you thought just you ate meant. ribs <laughs> and a lay. <laughs> <laughs> we eat ribs, then we fuck. <laughs> Welcome to Chicago. And a dance floor. They would put a dance floor in the backyard, like straight up. Like everybody Damn. had so much fucking fun. Yeah. I learned how to, uh, how to Dougie from like my two year old cousin. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. It's fun. But like, you are right. It's just, it's it's great to go and see go and see other cultures. If you ever get a chance, go and have like my girlfriend's Latina as fuck. Yeah, she is. Like, I like I know Thanksgiving is coming, and I'm excited to spend a little bit of it with my friends because I know as soon as I go to hers, it's just tamales and people watching soccer for no apparent reason. Yeah, I don't know where you soccer. find a soccer game from Senegal, but apparently it's we're all, watching it. It's always on. <laughs> and there's just 40 dudes sitting around it ignoring their wives and kids <laughs> and then me dressed like a gringo like shouldn't have worn a button down to this thing. <laughs> but always keep the you always keep the wife beater underneath just for just unbuttoning purposes. I love that. Loosens you up a bit. No matter what's changed in culture, we're still going to refer to that piece of clothing as, as a that. wife beater. I know <laughs> Oh, what a fucking weird thing to call a shirt. <laughs> and it's okay to say that out loud at a target. It, yeah. Well, and like, <laughs> I'm looking like, for did, a wife did anybody beater? ever hit somebody with a shirt? Because if so, yeah. is that what it was? Well, have you ever watched cops or, uh, or, uh, <laughs> yes. Jerry Springer, anyone who was like, look, bitch was getting mouthy. 
is 100% wearing that piece of clothing. Yep. Now, it'll usually have a variation of whatever <laughs> beer they're wearing. You know what I mean? It's always like a natty light or something like that on it. So you can, depending on what region of the country you're from, you can either call it a wife beater or a porch drunk because if you're... <laughs> really? <laughs> no, I've never heard that I just one. made that up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but a, wow. A porch drunk shirt could work too because... Anyone who's porch drunk always has a wife beater on as well. Well, you actually got me shit faced when I was in Chicago. I just remember that right now. Because you were in Chicago at the same time Rob and I, Rob Christensen and I were on Oh, tour. yeah. And I was like, what's Malua? And you're like, Malort? Malort. Malort. Like, uh. You're like, drink it. And I was like, I don't know if I should. And you're like, nah, I'd do it. And then I think I pissed the bed. <laughs> Did you really? 100%. I like... <laughs> I drank this Malort and I was like, well, it tastes not bad. I'll do six or seven of them. Yeah. And then we're at a Motel 6 and I woke up in a steaming heap of my own piss and I was like. <laughs> and you were like, thank God we're in a Motel 6. Nobody's Fuck even going to notice. <laughs> <laughs> I just made this place more valuable. <laughs> <laughs> this is famous person, future famous person piss on your bed right here. You save this mattress. It'll be worth something one day. I love Chicago, by the way. It was really lovely. Chicago's the best. Chicago's great. I just played there again. I'm going to be playing there again soon, but um, I try to go every like three, four months to Chicago and yeah. play. Because it's it is the best, and it's such a fun, welcoming city. Yeah, like you've like you just can't have a bad time after a show, and it's accidentally four in the morning easily all the time because so everything's open till four. Yeah, Chicago people party. I was there the year they got in. They won the World Series. They were leading up to it. Oh and they yeah, just finished all the renovations on the stadium. And yeah, shit. it was an amazing city. I miss I miss bartending in Chicago because I made so much fucking money. Yeah. It's such a drinking town it's and it's huge, not cheap. Yeah. People in LA are cheap. Like yeah. service industry is cheap in Los Angeles, in Chicago. I, I made at the last bar I worked at before I moved to LA, I made like 900 a shift. Shit. Yeah. That's like stripping If you're struggling money and you want to get into comedy, go fucking live in Chicago, clean yourself up and get a bartending job. Yeah. Because you, that's what I did. Like or I just bar fuck a more famous comedian. Or just, yeah, just, just get some money from somebody that is Just go on the road and blow a headliner. <laughs> yep. That does work until, you know, until you find out that they're uh, married to five different people. <laughs> I've never had that. Never None had of that. The dudes never had I've that experience. Done. It was fine. <laughs> P.S. What's, that, what's your name again, bro? Paul? Paul. You know, it's funny. Uh, during, like, uh, you guys can't see or hear this, but during uh, the recording of this, Paul's been, like, walking backwards and forwards, <laughs> just doing his job, not hurting no one, right? One, yeah. you're a fucking champion. Do you remember that Christian Bale <laughs> when he lost it at a guy who was behind the scenes when they're trying to do something? <laughs> That's how, I don't know that. I didn't don't know? see that. Like, no. the, the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Walking behind my scene like da, 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 da. and you hear this sweet little guy in the corner is like, I'm just adjusting the lights. He's like, Well, how the fuck are they? He's like, hey, good, well, good, could you ruin the fucking scene, haven't you? Oh my god, you know, what? <laughs> if anyone hasn't heard it, just Google Christian Bale goes off and he goes forever and he keeps going from his British accent to his American Stop. accent. <laughs> and then he's just, oh, watch out for the set, you prick. It's the best. <laughs> oh my god. It was my ringtone for like four months. <laughs> Whenever someone <laughs> rang, it was like, the, the, the fuck are you doing? <laughs> anyway, just want, to, just want to stop the podcast and give, give my boy <laughs> Chrissy B a bit of a shout, shout out. out. To, shout out to Paul for inspiring that almost. <laughs> I forget what Paul, I think he just like walked outside at one point and then just cruised back in. I was like, oh, you're not liking the podcast? All right. <laughs> Fine. You got better things to do? Yeah. Just being busy over there, audio engineering the shit out of this place. So anyway. <laughs> We need to get into some of your backstory because okay. what got what made you want to get into comedy in the first place? Uh, I was a show off as a kid, so I don't. That always, doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah, I know, right? Because my <laughs> eyes. But um, <laughs> why would I want people to look at me? <laughs> no, I grew up on the Gold Coast, and I have two older brothers who would like beat the shit out of me, and I love them to death for it. But I like grew up as like the show pony of the family, like all comedians are. You're either like yeah. the youngest, or you were beaten. And I was both. one of them. You were both, sort of both. So then I got into radio, that went well, and then I got fired, and then I got into TV, and then that went well, and then I got fired, and then I was like, all right, well, I should just stop being a dick and follow my heart, mm -hmm. and then I moved to America, and I was like, I'll do stand-up comedy. I mean- But when did you move here? Where did you move first? I moved to New York for a year, two years, a year and a half, mm -hmm. and I was just doing an odd job out there as like a correspondent while I figured out what I wanted to do. 
Uh, New York's amazing to live in, by the way, because I don't, here's how drunk I was for two years. I don't really remember living in New York. <laughs> I just remember my apartment and all the friends I made. But if I was to be like, what do I do most weeks? I have no idea. What? I don't really remember it much. I yeah. remember how much, like, it felt like I was there for like a weekend, but I was there for two years. That's so crazy because I kind of feel maybe that's just looking back on being young, period. But yeah. I kind of feel like that about my four and a half years in Chicago yeah. to, to an extent. Yeah. Like I did do a lot. Like I was when I was starting Second City and doing all that. So, I mean, if I were to really think it through, I'd be like, OK, I did a lot of shit. But like so many I was so broke, too, that like I would just put like vodka in a Gatorade bottle and go roam around the city by myself sometimes. Perfect. And it was I was yeah. like. Just yeah. partying. Yeah, no, you should have been <laughs> in meetings for sure. But <laughs> yeah, I should have. Yeah, but it's like, but but I wore a sundress, like so it's not a problem if you look cute. Man, right? sundresses are the man. You can be a dude in a sundress, and lately here in LA, I'm like that guy's got some pins. Uh huh. <laughs> sundresses, uh, sundresses for me are hotter than lingerie. <laughs> yeah, because I wear lingerie. Yep. Well, I wear like. Whatever. I'm not My lingerie is pajama robes. I wear ro poor Justin. I never look sexy around the house. I'm just in like <laughs> puffy robes all the time. I'm the grossest around the house person ever. <laughs> like like or Wisconsin gym shorts. Like that's, that's what I fire. wear. You're mm -hmm. trying to really keep that thing alive, huh? Yeah, I'm just the sexiest man. Just like <laughs> romping romping around in a puffy ass robe. I can't imagine you guys <laughs> having relationship troubles. Because you seem like both very cool people. Yeah. Like me and my girlfriend do because I'm a piece of shit and she's an angel. That was that was always going to be bumps <laughs> in that road. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm a belligerent drunk. <laughs> she's a sweetie pie. Uh -huh. But like you guys seem like a very good fit. We are a good fit. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why it's, you know, and I'm vocal about stuff because I just don't have a problem telling people just how things are. Because yeah. I think I think so much of our life is projected to look perfect all the time. And I just don't want to live my life like that. Like, yeah. that's the whole point of this podcast. And pretty much everything that I write is like, hey, it's OK. It's OK if things aren't like smooth sailing yeah. all the time. So. Yeah, I mean, we don't have, like, as far as troubles go, our troubles have been very, very minor. Yeah. You know, it's just, there's a lot of things you have to, like, go through mentally when you're about to marry somebody. I think you should. I think it's go smart to do things. that. It's probably why there's 50% divorces. A lot of people, people don't like, do that. No, nah, because a lot of, especially, I know a lot of people who just looked at it like, yay, engagement party. Then I got a bridal shower and then we got a hen's blah and then we got, and then we got the wedding. And then, and then they cheat within the first six months because yes. you've got a year and a half of excitement, action packed uh, planning and parties. And then all of a sudden you're just left with a guy named Dale with a gut who loves college football. Exactly. And then as soon as a guy called, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Derek with pecs at Best Buy is like, you want to fuck? You're like, okay. Yeah, well, I need Let's some excitement right yeah. now. Let's. I yeah. Don't know. In my, ex like a lot of my excitement, it comes from me. Like I just make, you know, I keep myself having things to look forward to because I travel a lot. Yeah. So I'm, you know, and that's a big thing too when you're in entertainment, like two people that travel a lot. You know, you just kind of hit these stagnant patches where you're like, what's next for us? You know? Yeah. You know, it's just interesting, but it's just time. Like, you know, I've, I've noticed the same thing with friendships. I've had friendships for like 25 years. You know, you go in lulls. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you you catch up one day and you're like, okay, things just feel yeah. good again. Some of my best friends I don't ever talk to. Yeah. Isn't that as funny? As soon as I see them again, I'm like, hey, what's up? But then there's some people I'll be best friends with for like a year and mm -hmm. then we just stop talking. That's LA like, though. Uh, that's such an LA thing. Yeah. Because I've, I've, had, I've had a couple, uh, two times with women and one time with a gay guy. So I guess three times with women. Uh, <laughs> but uh, where, where we're like inseparable and then yeah. all of a sudden they like, would they just disappear? And yeah. I, it's such a, it's such a weird thing for me because being from Wisconsin, when you have a friend, they just don't disappear unless they like murder somebody that yeah. you know. Well, you're from Wisconsin or, and then they make a documentary about it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> which is way, which is why people are so good at doing it from Wisconsin. They know that they're going to get documented. I don't know. Steve Avery looks real <laughs> shit at murders. <laughs> oh, sorry. He didn't do it or something this week. I don't know. And you moved to LA what year? <clears throat> I moved, 2011, right? I, so it was my same year. I Yeah, I think it must have been 2011. No, it was 2011 because when I was backstage at the comedy store, I saw that I wrote Craig Lowe 2011 and I saw it and I remember thinking, shit. I thought we would have done more by now. Yeah. But I didn't. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, and that's what I feel like too. I mean, every, I remember having this conversation with another comic, like God, four years ago when bite Size TV was still around. Do you remember that no. studio it was at Hollywood and Vine by the Metro. It was like a really cool oh, okay, studio. Yeah, yeah. And they had a comedy show and it was shot with like all these multi cams. It looked, looked really dope. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I was shooting an episode and, and Tiffany Haddish was there and this other comic was there and I, I won't say who, but, um, good friend. And he's, he was like, yeah, I'm, he was on this show at the time on MTV and he was like, yeah, I, you know, I, I thought it'd be really cool to be on TV, but like this show isn't my favorite show. And I was like, you're on TV though, bro. Like yeah. let's not complain, you know? Yeah. And then like the next year I got my first TV spot and I was like, I could totally get it now. Yeah. <laughs> How, yeah. Do you can get it? And yeah. then you're like, Oh, that didn't feel like that. Cool. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've been trying to enjoy the process getting there lately. Yeah. Cause I find it's a lot healthier. Cause mm -hmm. if you're looking at thing, like as soon as I hit this, it's, it's Gucci. Cause it never it's is not that way. that way. Not when you have like massive expectations for your life and you're like, yeah. uh, I mean, everything, I, if I break down the last eight years of my career, I'm like, okay, I've done like a lot of shit that I wanted to do, Yeah. but it, you just always keep adding new stuff to that list. So it doesn't ever yeah. feel like you really kind of get to anything because you already got something else that you're working yeah. towards. Well, this year was the first year I hit a wall with that in which I, yeah. I've always had stuff I'm pitching or writing or developing somehow. Like I had all these really cool things going on. And then for the first time ever, none of them eventuated and I had nothing on the table. So I had, I had a really rough year with E, the network this year. Yeah. So like I come from a background of interviewing celebrities. I've been doing it since I was 15, interviewing celebrities, doing live TV. So that's been my thing. And red that's how your, red, your name dropping with Craig, like that. Yeah, was, that's how that was it a great came. Series, like great yeah. live show that you had. So I was I was always like, and then I've met with E five. I've had four general meetings with E since I've been in America. And mm -hmm. each time I meet with the same fucking person and they're like, man, this but, but now feels right. And I was like, okay, cool. And then this is the first year, weirdly, they saw me at a show and then they called me in and then I came in and they were like, we just feel like the time's right. We're going to find a vehicle for you. I'm like, great. And then they're like, we're going to meet. You're going to go meet with these people. And then I met with this production company and they're like, yeah, we might bring back the soup and you might be the front runner for it. It'll be dope. I was like, great. And then they're like, but make sure you pitch us a show. I was like, great. I'll pitch a show as well. And then they sent me to New York to film a pitch pilot for them. So it felt like it was all going to happen. Yeah. And then when I got back, I pitched these two shows to them. One of them was a specific E show just called E Relevant, where it was a game show about pop culture shit from the day. Uh -huh. Fucking home run of a show. And they're like, in the meeting, like, this is all great. And then I get a phone call. Nah. And, yep. that, and that, that was that was like a five-month process. M mind you, when I was shooting their pitch pilot for them for free in New York, my best friend died, and I didn't get to be here for that. And then I'm like... Okay, and the last thing my friend said to me before he died was, man, I got a good feeling about you and E. And I was like, cool. Fuck. And then it was just a no. But then on top of that, all my friends get pilots up with E around me. Yeah. And I was like, ah, there's a lesson in here somewhere because I'm fucking so proud of all my friends for getting something Of up. course. But on the same account, you're just sort of sitting on the bench of success watching your friends slam dunk and you're like, I uh, go learn something, whatever this is. Yeah. Th I mean, it is true that timing is very, very important because I've seen people get like a, a thing and then it just doesn't pop yeah. in anything else because yeah. they didn't have other things going on. You yeah. kind of, it's kind of interesting seeing how things pan out for certain people, but it is, it's tough because I've been in the same position a couple of times. Like I had my first series as a finalist with NBC, like four, it was like four or five years ago. Yeah. So I did all those meetings with NBC and then like met another producer from NBC. And then I was signed on a holding deal for a while. And then I was on another holding deal. And then I was on a, 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 a shopping deal with one of my series. And then that died. And then a yeah. new shopping deal. And then I was at NBC writing a show and that never happened. Like s seven different things. Yeah. You know, and it's all a stepping stone into something. But in yeah. the process, you see a lot of, as they call it, your babies die, where you like create this yeah. whole show. And you can't like necessarily take the exact same thing to somewhere else. Yeah. So if it doesn't work out, you have to like see all these characters and this whole, you know, rundown that you created yeah. not exist anymore. True. And it's tough. You know, it's tough because you put a lot of fucking time that is unpaid into this mm -hmm. stuff. Well, over the past six years, I think I've 
written one pages, scripts, pitch pilots, all this. I think my girlfriend and I sat down and I, this is when I was like in a shitty headspace. I was like, I have literally come up with 55 different ideas with sizzle reels, pitch documents, all this sort of thing. And of those two got picked up. One of them became something that died off real quickly. Yep. And then that that's your batting ratio. I was like, yeah. on paper, I should want to kill myself. But then when I thought about it, I was like, the road to come up with all of those was so much fun. Yeah. And if I'd just been more happy about how much fun I was having in the moment coming up with something as opposed to can't wait to see a billboard for this thing. Right. Then you're going to find the happiness for it. That's what I'm learning this year by hating everyone who's doing successfully <laughs> and threatening bombs, obviously, at NBC Universal E. Yeah. But you know? I also know a couple other people who have had things that were on the docket at E that didn't end up panning out either. Yeah. So there's a lot of people that feel that same way. Yeah. You know, I mean, and maybe that wasn't for you. Maybe, you, maybe you've got like something scripted coming up. No, that, it was you know. for me. They got it wrong. I think <laughs> got, about it every night. Really? I literally, no, nah, not really. Oh, I was like, <laughs> I was like, fuck, dude. No, I sit like, do I draw, you know, pictures of people that I would definitely, no, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not that bad because now it's like, it's how it always happens. And I yeah. think this is what the point of the podcast is. And I'm honest when I say your role model shouldn't be anyone else in this industry because those people have so many failures that you don't know about. Exactly. I mean, no one does a TV show about how much they sucked. It's only ever, you know what I mean? Yeah. You don't see the five other things that they did that failed. And that's one thing that's happened this year for me is like, oh, on paper, great year. Personally, feel like shit, but that's fine. I yeah. know it's going to be okay. It's going to get better. Yeah. And it has to because I'm a creative person and I'll pull myself out of this shithole. But the only role model you should have definitely in your 30s is yourself. Because yes. if you're you're 19 and you're looking up to Ariana Grande, you're going to want to fucking headbutt a bucket of nails by the time you're 25. <laughs> it's it's true. not healthy. It's true. And you can't, like, you can't compare yourself. Like, I've been really good about that. Like, this is a really good suggestion, but a lot of people delve into Instagram and stuff and, like, troll yeah. through Instagram. I don't really get into those. Like, I'll look at people's stories and stuff to see what friends are up to, but I don't go down Instagram holes. Instead, I go down curiosity app holes. Do you know the curiosity app? No. I should fucking sp be sponsored by them. I talk about them so much, but- Just yell it into a, the Grand Canyon. Curiosity, curiosity, cur hover around, hover <laughs> around. Sponsor, sponsor. Um, curiosity is a app that every day gives you an update on something tech or like world or- it, the science, interesting stuff. Yeah. And then as soon as you read one article, it'll suggest another one. So I go down like holes with that. Ah. So instead of like ever getting into this space where I'm looking at other people's shit and comparing myself to them, I end up just like learning the fact like yesterday I learned that 60% of our wildlife since the 1970s has died. About time. So we're in like when I try to think about oh what's Natasha's next show I'm like well, also maybe our planet needs some attention so yeah. like let's put things on a grander scale. Yeah. When you're you not know? as focused about when you see comedy flyers with people who you know are trash yeah, that'll hurt your heart a lot. It does. I've gotten over doing that now. Yeah. Or someone taking a photo of himself in front of a crowd you're like <laughs> You shouldn't be doing that. Or like sometimes a new show will crop up and it's like comics that are two years in that are running it. And you'll be like, I'd love to do this sometime. And they'll be like, send us your tape. And I'm Is like. Is this a show at Boomtown? I'm like, I did. I did the Boomtown show. Yeah. She, she hit me back. She was like, can you send me a tape? And I was like. Who did? Oh, oh fuck. What's her name? No, no, no. The Boomtown. I did. <laughs> I'm thinking of a different show. I, did, I sent her back a video of cats. I did a one-off show at Boomtown that I ran oh. with only four comics on it. And I had sponsors and was paying the comics like, well. Yeah. And then I just was like, this location is too hard to get people yeah. to. So I didn't do it again. Yeah. Um, but I haven't done another one at Boomtown. Oh. I didn't know anybody else had one there. Oh, I just saw a show at Boomtown and the girl follows me. So I was like, hey, man, I love to do it. She was like, can you send me a time? <laughs> Like, and I, I just don't even respond. Well, I'm, I'm like, okay, dude. I, it's not entitlement, but it's just no, like, it's you don't, not. You don't. But it's like a, but it's a, you know, it shows like that. I'm like, I get if you need to see my press kit, which it's all online, by the way. You can yeah. just Google the fuck out of me. But um, I don't know if a guy who races NASCAR is like, hey, I'd love to come watch your go kart sometime. Don't be like, I'm gonna need video of your NASCAR. It's like, bro, you win a go kart. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. No, exactly. I'm like, I get that the levity 
movies and all that stuff like need to see footage <laughs> but like you're doing you're a back Marsha? room at like with like five seats in it like do you really need to see my real like <laughs> i'm gonna come to your show and try out new shit yeah so it's like yeah I'm not going to come and bring like 800 people yeah. and sell that shit out. <laughs> I'm not going to sell out your free show. <laughs> that being said, what do you have that you are excited about for next year? I, mean, you, I assume you're looking forward to next year if this year felt like bleh. No, I'm planning on ending it in December. <laughs> this is my farewell tour right now. That's why shit. this podcast is going to mean a lot to my I've, mom. Yeah, I forgot you guys. He paid me to put him on here so he could say goodbye. Well, actually, you asked me to send you a tape of other podcasts I'd been on before. <laughs> Just my highlight oh podcast my reel. I, uh, yeah. I don't know. I got, I got, I got, uh, I feel like there's something I'm doing, but now I, I can't even think of it. Or tours, anything upcoming in that? Or you just kind of post shit as, as it comes on Instagram? Uh, yeah, I post as it comes. You can follow me on the name Natasha Hates, which is at Lowy Live. <laughs> Lowy. Uh, you want to see how attractive my girlfriend is? That's the best place to sort of do that. Yeah, Slide dude. into a DM, send her a she dick is. pic. She shows them to me and they're hilarious. She's a super hottie. Yeah. Congratulations on that. Yeah, nah, really, really, really doing good stuff there. Yeah. yeah. Hey, do you guys live together? Yeah. Okay, sweet. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So it's real. Yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, me and Justin moved in after our first year of dating, and I was like, yeah, this is awesome. Yeah. And weirdly enough, the last, like, there must just be juju in the air or something, but my ex that I haven't talked to in eight years, who's like crazy and I think was in jail for a while over the course of my last really has been calling me on Saturday, every Saturday night at like two in the morning on in Facebook messenger. The most, the mo <laughs> the mo <laughs> and I haven't picked it up yet, but I kind of want to like answer one of these and film it and put it on my Patreon page and be like, <laughs> let's make fun of my ex. Whenever someone rings me through an app, I'm like, oh, you don't, you don't know how phones work yet. Yeah. <laughs> or they're just weird. Like, what? Yeah. Who calls you through an app? Bro, Unless I, don't, I don't pick up when mum calls. If you think I'm picking up when Brian from grade nine softball hits me up on yeah. like yeah. Facebook Yeah, it's so up. strange. I've gotten Instagram calls from people, and I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah. Calling, you're calling me from Istanbul? I'm not going to answer. Uh, that's a dick for sure. <laughs> I mean, what, uh, what is your social media so everybody can find you? Uh Oh, no, it's the same across the board. At Lowy Live on Twitter. Oh, I'm verified for some reason. <laughs> I don't even know how that happened. Dude, yeah, you're verified on all the things, Yeah, right? I'm verified, bro. Come you're... and see what someone with 4,000 fake followers looks like. Super verified. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look, I can I can tell you kids how to do life better. Yeah. Oh, oh shit. No, I do have something coming up. Um, December 14th, I'm holding the uh, Craig Lowe's under six foot... Uh, with eyes too wide apart luncheon. It'll be at the <laughs> Moose Lodge uh, where we can discuss straight white Craig eyes wide apart things, you powerful, brave bitches. Perfect. I'm going to be there. I'm going to come. You don't You I'm don't gonna, qualify. I don't qualify. No, tickets are $400 <laughs> and they're going very slowly. <laughs> There's two so far. It's just There's me two. and one it's other you guy. And one other Craig. <laughs> You can find me at NPH Comedy. You can follow the podcast at Future Role Model. You can follow the entire network of podcasts at Comedy Pop-Up or at CPU Podcasts. And I think that's it. Goodbye. <laughs>